Hi, I'm Patrick Kelly and I'm the uh, current president or, or director, we usually say here, of the Kelly Kettle Company, which is based here in the west of Ireland. Yeah, we're recording. We're good. I well, well Mr. Patrick Kelly. See, I, I got an Irish accent already. I'm just... Yeah, it's, it's poor. It's nearly as bad as Tom Cruise's in that film a few years ago. It was, it was pathetic. I, I, well, into the West or something? I forget. I forget. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And good, good. I have some Irish whiskey for a whiskey fireside chat. What are good. What are, what are you on? Oh, Black Bush. Yeah, you're very good. Very good. Well, I actually, um, yeah, you've turned me out of the whiskey as well, even though I shouldn't really be drinking whiskey, but I have a very simple, nice, uh, I have a little Jemison for you today. Oh, lovely. lovely. Yeah, very nice good. and easy to drink. So, slauncher. Mm, very nice. Hey, all right. So, um, where did this all start? This kettle idea? It was your great grandfather? The history of the kettle dates back to the 1890s. So uh, it's been, you know, four generations and over 100 years. So, you know, I'm very proud to be the fourth uh, generation and to have our name on a product. So it's, it's always been small, small little family business. And, uh, you know, we're very proud that it's starting to grow and be recognized internationally. My my, well, my great-grandfather originally, but and people always ask, well, what did the first one look like? And, you know, have you records of this and records of that? And it's funny because my great, when you go back to the 1890s, um, I mean, there was no records of anything. Ireland was occupied. My great-grandfather spoke Gaelic. Uh, uh, you know, there was no, you know, you didn't pay your taxes. <laughs> you, you didn't comply with anything. So all we had was really, uh, uh, it's, it's just, it's handed down. It's actually, it's an oral sort of tradition that's handed down. It's really up until uh, more recent years that the whole thing became formalized and became popular. So I suppose the original one was, was we don't actually, we're not 100% sure of what it looked like, but we, we believe it's, it's, it's approximate size of the base camp. So it's the current base camp, which is, you know, the one point, whatever, 1 1.6 liter. That one that you're, you're probably familiar with, that, that one. Yeah. We, we believe it's around that size. And that time, was, like everything was, everything was homemade. You know, we're in the west coast of Ireland here. It's pretty bloody remote at times, particularly back in the 1890s. It must have been pretty cruel. So um, you, made, you made use of whatever was around you. So, I mean, they tinkered away. They really, you know, and... and they just they made, they made crap up, anything that worked that, that could be, and they reconstituted everything. So it's not like the kind of modern, modern day, I suppose, when we chuck it out. So, uh, it, it, so the, it came from around the 1890s. We don't know where the hell the idea came from because my great grandfather would never have left the area. They would never have left the area, never mind left the country. I mean, my grandfather, Jim Kelly, he was probably in his late 50s before he left the country for the first time he went to uh, he was actually invited to scotland fishing with angling friends of his who used to come over every year fishing on la Con, and they brought him to scotland fishing and that was the first and i think the only time he ever left the country um so so it's it's a, so it's an old tradition for us here on the lakes and in the west of ireland but it's very very much a local one and very much a little cottage industry i mean it wasn't a commercial business to be honest it wasn't probably a commercial business until my father took over probably in the 70s. At that stage, they started to become not mass produced, but certainly produced in bigger numbers in aluminium, which is, uh, which is when they started to spread a little bit more. And again, it was the anglers coming here that would have brought one home with them. So it was anglers coming from the UK and Germany that might pick up a kettle here. And those were spun aluminium. Uh, and that was in my father's time, going back to the 70s and into the 80s. But again, it was still a tiny, tiny cottage industry. I mean, to be honest, it was sort of pocket money at Christmas. So I used to come into the house. It was a little bit of money that used to come into the house around Christmas time. So it wasn't really a, 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 a you know a viable business, or there was no people living off it per se. It was it was kind of pocket money, and it wasn't, I suppose, until recent years. My brother Seamus and I we took over the business um, probably about 16, 16 years ago or so, and we I was a, I was a banker would it be a banker. For my sins beforehand very similar to the other ones but i just a b a banker and he was a uh shame background as a marching 
And uh, so we, we, we took over the business about 16 years ago and we started fiddling around with it. And again, all the, we only had two size kettles at the time. And uh, that was, which was the larger, the base cam model and the smaller tracker one, and both were aluminium. Twigs from the dog. What are you doing, Ash? Uh, lighting a fire for, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna make a cup of tea. The dog's breaking up some wood there for us. We brought the Kelly kettle, because uh, this thing's incredible. Uh, like, as long as you got some dry wood, and we have, we've got lots, it's light, it's very quick at boiling water, and yeah. And if them Irish guys that invented it, and I hate to say this, were here, I'd give them a big kiss. Because we're having tea. And of course, everybody wants to crack the North American market. So here we are in Ireland and you're looking at dreaming big, you're going to make it big. And we just well, started watching the, re, uh, just reading emails and, and feedback from people. And all they want was stainless steel, stainless steel, stainless steel, don't like aluminium, don't like aluminium. I kind of go, we don't have, you know, we don't have stainless steel kettles. Hurry up and chew that tree, will you? We'll be back. Ashley uh, can't light the Kelly kettle. No. Because he's English and I'm Irish, are going to have to do all the work for him. We started the search for the stainless steel then at that stage, which was a huge sort of move because the tooling involved, we priced up the tooling at the time and it was about a quarter of a million euros. And we thought, like, this, I mean, this is a small little company now. This is a small little sideline business. I was, I was still working at the bank at the time. Seamus is actually a teacher at this stage. So it's only just a little hobby still. And we were kind of going, um, uh, what, how are we going to get steel kettles? We've no, there's no steel tradition in Ireland. You know, there's really, I mean, the Ireland missed pretty much most of the industrial revolution. Uh, so we don't have steel works, we don't have coal works, we don't have anything like that. So, but we priced up the tooling was about a quarter of a million euros at the time. We thought, oh, bloody hell, you know, that's not going to work. <laughs> We're not going to take a punt on steel, making steel kettles, hoping that it, it, uh, they're popular and fork out, you know, a quarter million euros for it. So we ended up, um, we ended up, looking for a supplier uh, in Europe, again, difficult. And eventually, eventually we found a fabulous partner uh, in China and we are work with them ever since. They're, they're brilliant they're, and they're, they're good friends now. They're good friends of ours and we work really close together. They're actually based in Hong Kong. And um, we developed the first steel kettle. And from the moment we got the first uh, stainless steel kettle, you could actually see people talking about it. Across, across the pond. So people in Canada, the US, oh, I like the steel, I like the steel, I like the steel, I like the steel. And we're kind of, so then we made, we just made one as a product. We made the big one, which is the biggest seller, the base cap in steel. And then we started, okay, well now we'll move on to the next stage, little baby steps. We made the Trekker in steel and that was popular. And then we made, you know, the, the Scout model like this one here in steel. And then, and eventually we said it was all steel. So basically all our accessories, and you, I know you're a big fan of the hobo stove and stuff. Oh yeah, big time, yeah. What'd you catch, Ash? Lake trout. Well, this may be Ashley's fish, but this is my hobo stove. Uh, it's a, from Kelly Kettle, brand new. I uh, just got it two weeks ago, very excited. And um, yeah, it's a fish stove, just like uh, a whole bunch of other fish stoves. The cool thing about it is you can bring the Kelly Kettle and boil water, and you can actually cook all fish on this. So we're cooking lake trout, Ashley's lake trout. Thank you. And we're just on this one island in Algonquin Park where, you know, it, it, it's not a campsite. It's uh, just a small little island and there's a whole bunch of dead sticks that are hanging around. So that's all we're using is a bunch of small little sticks to cook our lunch with. And it's really good lake food. Before the trip, this man here actually wrote all his name on all his lures. Because he didn't want me, obviously, to I use I don't get a chance to defend myself. Well, my wife right brought in. them on. That's because no way your wife did that. she did not want us to get them mixed up because I have better lures than you have. Oh, better lures. So what this lake trout was caught on a lure that had no oh, name. Oh, you just gave it to me and says, here, try that. I'm uh, like, just do Irish, a piece, in, yeah. in English, I always argued like this. Yeah. It, but it really grew from being absolutely, you know, a hobby coming through the years. And it, it, it didn't it really, it's the last... I suppose the last 30, 40 years it was growing. And then when we hit the, when we eventually kind of made the jump to go to stainless steel, even the stainless steel, to be honest, it involved sort of remortgaging the houses and stuff like that, even just to just to take the punt on it. 
But when we went from aluminium to steel, it just the graph kind of went that way. Well, that's when I suppose if it wasn't for the steel, and if it wasn't for maybe having that punt and the balls to have a go at it there a few years back, we wouldn't be talking now. You probably wouldn't have a kettle. You know, people would never have heard about them. You know, and I know they're still they're still they're still not mainstream. But we're, we're slowly getting there, I, I, you know, thanks to the likes of ourselves and people using them. I, I remember the first time I, I, I used one. I was in Scotland. Uh, I was on a trip with my daughters. I think she was like five at the time. We were in northern Scotland, and I got an outfitter uh, to sort of gear me up. And he dropped me off in the middle of um, oh, one, one of the locks. I forget where it was. But, um, and it was just pissing rain, and there was no trees. And it was no totally different environment for me, right? I'm used to, you know, Canada, right? And uh, this is Scotland. It's raining, and there's no trees to put a tarp up. and and um, I said, like, yeah, this is it, I'm, I'm bailing. And my daughter says, well, come on, Dad, we're not made out of sugar. There's a lot of hills. We climbed, we climbed some hills. We're on a hill right now. We climbed up a volcano, but it wasn't eruptive. Yeah, it's a little bit cold here. But, and we have a tunnel tent, but it's not really with tunnels. We found ferns, and that's where, where I get fiddleheads. Fiddleheads yep. are a kind of vegetable, and there's all the ferns. Oh, that's what you did, okay. Kind of like shaped like bees. There is some trees, but there's not a lot. So, so we headed out, and then in the pouring rain, I opened up the kit, and I'm looking for the camp stove. And it was this, right? <laughs> and I, and I, I, what the hell is that? I had no clue what it was, uh, right? And the guy never even told me anything about it. So I figured out how to, how to light it. What you do is uh, you pour the water in this spout here and you feed the flames by putting the heather, the dried heather or not dried heather, oops, by putting the heather down the hole like this, like so, and it burns down there quite well <laughs> and uh, it boils the water around the edges and it boils water a lot quicker than stove, I gotta, I gotta say, it boils water really quick. So it gets the tea going really quick. And I'd say if I'm traveling the Highlands, I wouldn't go without this thing. And uh, I was addicted to it. I just like, this is amazing, especially where we were too, because you, you're in the fen, right? And there's always that, mm. those uh, branches to, to, to cut up and use it. It was perfect stick stove. And um, yeah, so I got back to Canada. I was telling everybody about it. And I think I ordered one from Ireland, which was it's crazy. Cause I, th I think I could have bought one in Ottawa here, but. Yeah, and then probably yeah. yeah, Lee Valley. Lee Valley used to carry them. That's right. Probably the first, the probably the first Canadian customer I think at the time to carry them. Lee Valley, yeah. Wow, oh, man. And now my my buddy uh, Tim at Kenny Outdoor Equipment, like he uh, he sells them. In fact, actually, it was funny. Just before the virus hit, he he pretty much sold out of them, which is pretty scary in one sense. But, we 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 had the same thing here. Um, you know, we're chipping away. We kind of our sales are usually kind of pretty uniform all through the year, and then they kind of spike for because they're nice, they're beautiful gift for Christmas and that kind of thing. So they normally, like a lot of retail, it booms in sort of November, December, and then the rest of the year it's fairly, fairly steady. But this year, actually, yeah, for March, it just went bananas. And I think it was, I think it was the virus, and I think it was, I think it was two things. Uh, it was prepping, people prepping, because they're actually hugely popular with preppers. So I think it was people prepping, and two was people realized that there's not going to be many foreign holidays this year in bits and pieces. You know, the flights are going to be restricted, all of that. So we might get about and let, let's 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 muck around in the woods or up down up by the lake with the with the with the kids or whatever. So I think it was those two cohorts. But certainly in March it just went bananas. Yeah, which was it's they say it's an ill wind that doesn't blow some good. So we'll take we'll take it we'll take it when we get it. But we've already now we found it slowed down a little bit again. So after that initial. Uh, I suppose the uncertainty of everything it has it has uh, settled down a little bit again, but still it's still actually very busy. Yeah, well, because uh, if anybody out there doesn't know how, can you can explain how it works because it it is a different type of stick stove. There's we have a lot of various stick stoves here in Canada, but nothing like the Kelly kettle. And the, the difference, obviously, is the water is around the perimeter. So, can you talk through about how how it really works? Yeah, I suppose it's it's. Um, I'll just use the tracker one. The one is the one you use. I think. Um, Good Lord, Patrick, mine's more well used than yours. Jeez. Yours, yeah, I, I've got a little nice shiny one just for the moment. But uh, yours, the teal tastes better out of your one. Yes. I suppose what makes them very, uh, very different is that so it's basically a double wall cylinder. So actually, up the centre is uh, is hollow. So what we've done is it's the chimney. It's actually a very simple idea when you think about it. 
uh, if, the, if the chimney is, uh, the fire is built within the, within the chimney itself. So there's actually a big, a very large surface area. Uh, rather than if this was just a pot, you'd only be hitting the bottom, bottom piece, but this actually, you're, you're hitting the whole, the all big surface area of the chimney itself. And the water is in here within uh, the double skin wall. So the water is in there. So the water is in there and that um, basically, we have a little fire base. And that normally inverts up when you're not using it. That, that's just packed away like that. But when you're using it, then you take that out, flick it over, air hole into the wind, as you know well, and you build your fire within that fire base and up the chimney of the kettle itself. So you're dropping, you're dropping sticks and whatnot down through the chimney here, and you get a wonderful stack effect. So you get a wonderful, you get the air rushing in here and shooting up. Uh, so you're getting fabulous combustion. And it basically, anything that burns, anything that burns, if you can fit it down there, you can burn it. So. I mean, it sticks, it's pine cones, it's dry animal dung if, dung, if you're lucky to be in a nice arid climate. It's, if it burns, you can use it. So, I mean, we've burned, you know, anything, you know, you can use paper, twigs, uh, you know, birch bark, anything, anything. If you pick it up, uh, it can burn. Your mate's shirt, anything. Uh, I've seen actually a couple of cool shirts. People even, um, little one like, but sand, it's all a military one, the fistful of sand in the bottom. You've probably seen that one before. Fistful of sand in the bottom, and then a poor little bit of gasoline in there. And then light it. It doesn't actually go puff. It actually kind of simmers. Oh well. Yeah, it's one, one for you to try it yeah. when you're cooking. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Fish, fish put of sand, sand at the bottom, a bit of gasoline, light it, and then it that that kind of folders away, and you put your kettle on top. You don't boil it. Anything at all. Anything at all. If it burns, you can use it. So, but again, it's the it's the stack effect. It's the fact that it's such a big surface area inside. And then you have, you have rapid heat transfer. So you have all that, that wonderful, as the chimney gets warm, the, it, it, all the heat transfers out into the water and it boils quick. So typically these ones anything between maybe three and five minutes. And really the wind, the beauty of it is that the, wind, that the fire is all contained and you don't need a wind screen. Uh, and the more actually, actually the kettle actually loves the wind. The more the windier it is, the quicker it boils. We're calling this Kelly kettle in the bush with Christmas cake, but uh, on the way here, we're giggling. I just reached my 18,000 subscribership on my YouTube KC Happy Camera channel. Very exciting, woohoo, congratulations, woohoo. Congratulations, <laughs> Kevin. And uh, so I thought, gosh, you know, it'd be nice if I had 20,000 um, and how to do that. And we started laughing, we're like, well, we're gonna have to work on our click baiting. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we'd call this the bushcraft, with a gorgeous female and a dog <laughs> in the wilderness, lost, surviving. Surviving on only Christmas cake. Yes, not enjoying Christmas cake in a kettle, but surviving just with a Kelly kettle and Christmas cake <laughs> while bushcrafting alone, except with a very attractive female and a cute dog. What else can we put in there? Um... We nearly died. <laughs> That should be it. We nearly died in the wilderness with Christmas cake in the Kelly kettle. See, I told you this would take long to cook. All right. You know, so I suppose that's why it's, it's quite different. It's actually not a unique actually concept. It's a concept, the Chinese hot pot, the, or the, the Chinese hot pot in parts of um, China, Chinese hot pot, uh, uh, and also the samovar in parts of Asia and Russia. Okay. Have, have the similar principle actually of, of a fire up the center and and kind of water around around the chimney um so but no it's pretty it's pretty good it, they're, they're just so damn efficient and, 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 and I, it's just the vortex i i, I find that um uh, of all the stick stoves uh, um that i practice with my students like we have a a contest with them getting all their stoves going right and this always beats the, uh, for boil time because of the vortex that like a chimney it just really mm. starts cooking uh, more than the others, so you do need you do need some basic sort of uh, fire starting skills, though. Yeah, you know, so I mean, you still you still have to start the old fire. If 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 you're if you're if you're terrible at starting fires, you're gonna have you're gonna have trouble. But if you have any any sort of basic fire starting skills at all, yeah, they're they're they do it, it takes off. Once it takes off, uh, you, there's not a lot to do with it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, now you, so in, in theory, then it was your great great grandfather that actually would go out fishing, uh, just out, out the river where you where you live, and then. He thought this through and just want to use it just to have tea while he was fishing, just like you still do. 
That's all. We, st yeah, we, we, our, our background on my father's side is all fishing. So my father, the Kelly side is fishing and it goes back generations. Um, and my grandfather did it. My great grandfather did it. My father did it. And my brother and I, we still bring tourists out fishing on Loch Con. So like Loch Con is, is beside us here. It's only like my, my home house where I was born and raised literally backs onto the shore. So the farm where we were, where the kettles were, it backs onto the shore of Loch Con. And Loch Con is about 30 square miles of water. It's, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice size water. So, uh, and it's full of free, uh, free rising brown trout and salmon. And uh, we have pike and perch and other bits and pieces as well. But we used to get a lot of tourists over the years and they'd come over fishing. And the tradition was always that they would, they would come, they'd stay in local hotels or whatever it was. And guides like ourselves would bring them out on the, on the lake. So from the age of maybe 12, I suppose, my eldest brother and I would have, well, Seamus, uh, Shames and I would have brought tourists fishing from the age of 12, from 10 o'clock in the morning until six o'clock in the evening. We'd be pulled out of bed and we would say, right guys, where you go, you know, we'd have our breakfast, there's your sandwich, there's your cigarette lighter, there's maybe a fire lighter, just in case, you know, because it's always wet and windy here in Ireland, so it's, it's kind of hard to get dry fuel. There's your gear, there's your two tourists, there's Kevin and his buddy, away you go, and we'll see you this evening. And we were, we were kind of, uh, so we'd be going all day fishing, and the tradition always was that around one o'clock between one and two, you'd pull in on an island someplace and you'd light the kettle. So that was our job. You'd light the kettle and then boil up the boil up the tea and all that sort of stuff. And that went on. We did that as kids. My father has done it since he was a boy. My grandfather and great grandfather. We all did it. We all we all did it. And that's it was really that's how it kind of became popularized very much in Ireland here anyway, within the angling community. Um, so I suppose from your point of view, you're you're obviously a paddler. There's not a whole lot of paddling going on here in Ireland, but um, so in Ireland, but if you fish, if you fly fish in Ireland at all, or do any sort of fishing, you've, you've had tea out of one of these. <laughs> that's and, and that's how it sort of spread. And the, from there, see, a lot of our angling guests used to be um, British. So we get a lot of Scottish and English and Welsh over. So they would have sort of brought back word and brought kettles with them. And then over years, you'd have maybe more Germans from Northern Europe, Scandinavians and that kind of thing. So it's very much based on yeah, the angling tradition here. Yeah, for us, um, uh, it's more so uh, paddlers uh, and actually w winter camping. When I, when I winter camp, that's uh, we do a boil up uh, during in the afternoon, right? So we stop on the trail, and it's all to do with the Kelly kettle because uh, we're hauling everything on a toboggan, a freight toboggan, right? And yeah. um, and in spring when we go to a gonkin for brook trout, uh, we take the Kelly kettle to get the the coffee going early in the morning, and then uh, tea at night, and then actually the the uh, the hobo stove, which actually is it's relatively new, right? It is. Lake trout. Next question. Who caught it? <laughs> Wasn't a big one, but I mean, they always fight good though, don't they? Yeah. Well, the good thing about the hobo stove, which was kind of interesting, because we've always sort of known that the kettles work remarkably fast at boiling water superb at boiling water but you know we had been accused in the past of being oh you're a one-trick pony you know we love the kettle it's great for boiling water but you know i like my little bit of a fry or i want to heat up this or do that and the other so we're kind of always wondering how on earth we can sort of how can we get rid of that one-trick pony tag and it took us a while actually and the first thing first thing we actually came up with was a pot support up on top which i don't know i don't think you use it a whole lot but which was one of these sort of things that sort of a flat pack one. Yeah. So you can do. We can do an element of 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 uh, cooking over the top while the kettle boils, because obviously the flames jump out the top. So we can put that up on top, and we can put our pots or pans on top of it. But that 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 really only suits fast cooking items. You know, eggs, eggs, rice. You know, a pasta's noodles. Something, and as long as it can be done quick while the kettle is boiling, because once the kettle boils, you want to take everything off. So it still didn't solve the problem. But the the hobo stove actually, which I know you use a lot. That did, yeah. That that has that was kind of opened it up completely. And you use the fire, so when we use it with the fire base, so that's the fire base the kettle is normally sitting on. This is the bigger, this is the bigger fire base now. For the the tradition, that's your that's actually the traditional size kettle we'd use here in in in, in our boats. It'll all be this size because we'd have typically three people in the boat. So that's our that's the one point six liter uh, kettle the base camp. So what we do now is we take once the kettle is off. We can use our hobo stove. We just drop that on top, and that's a lovely, stable platform for uh, cooking on. And uh, 
and again, you can use anything, anything at all that burns fits in it. I like that when it's uh, when it's not in use, when everything is gone, packs away nicely inside. So it's nice and tidy. So yeah, that and that that thankfully, when we when we introduced that, we managed to shake the stigma finally of the one trick pony. So it took it took us a little while, but uh, we're happy with it. Uh, I mean, you like you like the hobo, don't you? I, I do, and the main uh, thing too is my, my daughter loves it, and my my one buddy's son that goes on a uh, 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 spring trips with us, he loves it. It's something because it's a contained fire for them. What you doing, man? Cooking your fish. How come you're not cooking the fish, Ash? Um, isn't there a rule? He who catches hands no. it off to someone else to do the cooking. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. the rule. No, first of all, I cleaned it, and now Dalton's cooking it. Yeah, it's so a team still, effort. If he catches it, someone else has to do all the work then, right? Yeah. We should all be like, yeah. grateful to Ash yeah. for bringing the food. Hail he, the his fish His job God. is done. He got the yes, food, right? Yes, I got... Thanks, Tim. Right. And we're going to make some tea. Right, like so. I don't know what it is, but any of the young people that actually get the hobo stove, it's their stove, it's their thing. And so my but 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 buddy son uh, Dalton, he just basically we get to camp. I fill up the fish. He gets the hobo stove going. Um, first of all, he makes his tea, and then he gets the stove going to fry up the fry up the trout. And my daughter does the same thing. Uh, and I, I don't know. And I find scouts love it. Like uh, in Canada here, we have the scouts just like you do. And you introduce them to to this uh, this whole system, and they, they just love it because it's their own thing, right? Yeah. And there's no fear to it. I mean, like some some kids are really afraid of lighting one of those gas stoves, uh, uh, you know, and you got flare up and stuff of like that. Where, and then you know, for them to build a big fire, uh, it's a totally different thing. But this is all self-contained. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I suppose it is. I hadn't thought of that. It probably is a personal little thing. So as you say, you can have your own little, your own little fire pit, and I can have mine, and you can have yours, and you can be doing your own little bits and pieces on it. But yeah. it is nice. It is nice and contained. Yeah, and you don't need to be building little fires, you know, or, or your, you know, ring of stones or anything like that. It's, you can kind of pop it up anywhere. That yeah. was actually, and that was actually one thing. And I don't, I don't know if I ever send you one. Did I send you the new base support? Maybe you don't. You probably don't use it so much, which was. Uh, Again, it just it was a criticism. But again, it's everything we do. We're we're still a very small family business, and everything we do is based on sort of feedback that we get off people. So, you know, there's no such thing as poor feedback. It's 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 constructive. Everything is constructive. So I was again, it was another criticism in that the fire, the base actually, the base leaves a that gets very hot, and that will leave a scorch mark on green lawns or picnic tables, or and we've all we're all guilty of it. Uh, where we kind of forget ourselves. Whereas obviously you could throw it on a bit of uh, you know, a bit of sand, a bit of gravel, a few or a rock or whatever, there's no scorch mark at all. But you know, green lawns or picnics or even patios in the backyard, that sort of stuff, or paving, decking, should I say, rather than patios. So one of the criticisms was again, uh, it, I don't want to leave again, no trace camping, we don't want to leave any mark at all that we were there. So what we did was, okay, well, how can we eliminate the um and again, it's all feedback from customers. How can we eliminate the scorch mark? So that's why we come up with the, this was obviously the pot support that we can use on the top. But now that we have the hobo stove, it's not as necessary. So what we've done is we, re, we redesigned this. So we flip it over. We flip this over now, and that's perfectly sized to hold the fire base. So that little thing now, I can actually set the, base support on the ground now onto timber decking, a picnic table, on the lawn, whatever. And that 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 remains cool to touch. So this can be we can have our hobo stove, we can be cooking way up on top here. And this is cool to touch at the bottom. So it's eliminated the scorch mark and all that sort of stuff. That's very really simple. So we, we can use it up on top. And uh, if you want to do the you know if you want to do the fast cooking food, we can drop it in the chimney. Or better still flip it over upside down and use it use it on, on the on the ground to eliminate that scorch mark. That's fantastic, oh. yeah. That, I, I don't I, know, did, I, did, I, did I send you one of those at all? No, 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 I, no off the order one. That looks really good. You also have the, the green whistle. Now, is it green because it's it's Irish? Yeah, we kind, we kind of, we kind of, yeah, we kind of went with the Irish, the Kelly green, you know. Tea is ready. So you pick it up like that, so you don't burn yourself up the top. Take this off. I love that. I'm glad I bought that. Tips, I actually don't use it at all because we're always 
it boils so quick that we're always beside the fire. We, you know, we don't leave, we never leave a fire. And, uh, you know, when we pull up on the lake shore or an island, wherever it is, we would never actually leave a, a fire unattended. So it boils so damn quick that you're always beside it. You're only gathering sticks or whatever. So, but people like the whistle. So, so we chucked it on there. So, but yeah, I, we, went for, I, I we, had to go, we had to go for the Kelly Green. Yeah. No, I, actually, I, I think the whistle was a really good idea. Uh, it, because there was that, that uh, phobia of, of uh, you know, how you, in the instructions it says, do not leave your cork on, on, on it or it will yeah. cause problems, right? And yeah. for some reason, I'm always paranoid that some kid is going to keep the cork on it. I don't know why they would, but, um, and I, I really, I don't even use the cork. I mean, I guess the cork idea is that when you get Google the water, you need a cork on it so it doesn't spill, right? It just, yeah, it's really stuff spillage. But I know some people used to think that they could to fill the kettle bung the, por- the cork in or the orange stopper or whatever, you know, so we, traditionally it was a uh, uh, cork and then we kind of, we, we came, we came with the orange stopper and we went for the orange stopper because it was kind of hot orange, it was warning red, we put a raised lettering on it, removed before use and all of that. Um, but they used to want to carry water in it and then kind of put the bung in to stop it spilling, you know, carry back. And that's what the idea of even the bale handle, the bale handle that you can carry like a bucket. So, I mean, you can fill out water and just walk up the shore nice and, you know, steady with it. But, um, we, the amazing thing is we were afraid that people wouldn't actually follow the instructions. And despite all the warnings of, you know, you know, remove before use, blah, blah, blah. We thought, you know what, just eliminate the risk altogether. So we said we'd just take, get rid of the, uh, get rid of the stopper. Um, got, we got rid of the orange stopper altogether. And now we've got this simple green whistle. And actually it's been very popular, particularly with, I suppose, families and kids and stuff. And um, so just, we just eliminated the risk completely. So you, so you and your theory. brother, you, you and your brother still have that that ability that your great grandfather and your grandfather had. It's just the tinkering. Is that how you come up with these? It's, things? It's, 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 it, well, I tell you, my father has a great saying, and I've used it. I've used it a lot, which is the more education some people have, the less common sense they have. Right? The more education they have, the less common sense they have. Now we we're, we've been fortunate in that you know we were sent to college and all that. Very very lucky. But I went to college with a lot of people, and I don't know, I, I don't know where, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. But I mean, the, it, 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 common sense has gone out the window. So everything we do is is purely common, kind of based on common sense, and trial and error. And we go and we muck around, and that's where the yeah, that's where the original, the the pot support came from on top, and then we tried to solve the problem of the scorch underneath. So we said, well, rather than having another item to carry, let's let's flip it over and see can we double job it here, keep the weight down and. You know, the hobo stove was, again, it's only a, a very simple, a very simple solution. Um, you know, we muck around with the teeth and with the air holes. It's, yeah, it's just, it's tinkering. Yeah, it's tinkering. There's nothing, I'm a tinker. <laughs> who, who was the mastermind behind the, uh, the lip guard on, on your, uh, your tin cups? Is that what you're supposed to do? Yep, there's the lip guard. All uh, right. Except it's empty. Oh. <laughs> what about some whiskey in there? Huh? I'll see what I can do. Right. That was that was me as well. That was me as well. I don't know, because you do they do get hot. I mean, the single I have them here as well. But the single wall cups do get hot. Yeah, and oh, uh, there's nothing worse than like burnt lips. I, I know. I, I I first brought one uh, on a trip with my buddy Speedo Man. I, he looked at it. And he was like, "What is this? What is this?" And and then uh, all of a sudden, everybody was gathering around. Where'd you get this thing? This is a genius. This is because. It's true, you drink it out of a tin cup, especially on a winter trip, it's just, it's not good at all. Yeah, and again, we were doing the, doing the cups, we were looking at, because we had actually double walled cups originally. We had double walled cups, which were fine, because you could actually hold them in the palm of your hand, and they're you know, slightly insulated, and they were cool to touch. But the problem is you couldn't cook in them. And we had people who wanted to, again, trying to make everything sort of multifunctional. So our cups are single walled now, we have the um, we've nice foldable handles and all that compact, and we have the measurements on the inside of the cup because a lot of people would bring say freeze dried food and it tells you add add two hundred and fifty mil of water, and you're in, if you're in the arsehole of no place, you're gonna go how much is two hundred and fifty mil of water? So I was just I get, well at least you could use your cup to whatever to get your measurements right. So we start we try to add in as much features like that, but I say I want to um, uh, originally have it a double walled cup so that uh, and, and we had actually double walled cups several years back but you couldn't cook in them you couldn't use them like a small pot to heat beans or, or make a soup or whatever it was so particularly you know when we had this the hobo and all that we left it in such a way so we went back to a single walled cup so people actually use them as 
uh, you know, for as a small pot or for doing a small bit of cooking or reheating or whatever. Like you can even sit your heads by the longer the longer teeth on one side of the hobo is that you can actually, you know, leave a cup onto the side of it and keep the contents hot, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's why it had to be single wall in the end. Had to be single wall. But because we it was single wall, then it was hot in the lips. So we just had to solve that problem. And that's where the little, uh, the cool lip came from. But yeah, they're, they're good actually. Oh, I love they're it. Actually, they're fantastic. They're, they're great that... actually because people, people keep losing them. Keep, people can lose them and then we have to sell them replacements. <laughs> Deadly. You know, what I, you know what I do? I have three in my kit. Uh, because someone's going to lose one, and then I get a free whiskey because I, I give them an extra one. It's like always yeah. bringing an extra roll of toilet paper on a trip. You can always get good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Trade for that. Oh, excellent. Um, excellent. Uh, well, so, so how, if you think back of the original one, um, mm. how much has it really changed? I, I know that you, uh, you don't rivet the – you don't – this has changed, right? It, Yes, that has changed, particularly on the steel ones. So that's a that's actually a steel one. That's one of the original steel ones. But the newer ones, the newer steel ones now have. We got rid of the rivets. So we used to have um, on the. Um, they were all riveted in the past. So they, where the chain is attached here and where the handle is attached, they used to be rivets. So you basically had to drill holes in the in the wall of the chimney, and then obviously any place where there's a hole is always a potential leak point. So we said, in the end, we thought, well, let's get, let's, on the steel ones, we can do it. So we eliminated the holes completely. So now we, we don't drill any holes. So these are spot welded on. So there's nothing really to, um, there's not a lot to fail. There's no place for the leak to, uh, to occur. And likewise, the bottom as well, the bottom here, the bottom joint is actually laser welded before we roll it. So that roll at the bottom is just a cosmetic finish now. The actual water tightness is from the laser, the laser weld underneath. Whereas historically, they were all aluminium, aluminium. Are you aluminium or aluminium? Potato, potato. Aluminium, yeah. You're aluminium. Yeah. Aluminium. Say we're aluminium. <laughs> yeah. Traditionally, traditionally the uh, so traditionally they were uh, al uh, aluminium, and uh, and that was actually rolled, and it was actually the roll the rolling you know and pressing together was actually what made it watertight. So the new steel ones are very, I suppose, it's just modern technology. It's it's, it's but it's the fact that it's steel that allows you to do this, you know you. You, in thin thin aluminium is just impossible like so so what we have with the steel it, it allows you to do these little changes but to, to be honest fundamentally the design has changed very very little i mean a few years ago again it was all based on customer feedback um a few years ago people it was raised why don't we put handles on the side of the kettle like a jug so we can, we can pour it like a jug and i thought yeah yeah it's not a bad idea it's fine it has, it has its pros and cons you know nice like we have in the cup little foldable handles and but i thought uh so we actually did a poll actually we put out a thing on facebook at the time where it says hey guys do you want us to develop handles on the side to make it you know useful for pouring or do you, do you like the bale handle and actually the vast vast majority says no leave it alone don't touch it we like the bale handle so the bale handle it is actually brilliant for when you fill it you can walk you know you can walk wherever you like around the camp with it whereas if you get a bigger if you get a bigger kettle and you had, you know, the handles on the side of it. That's filled with 1.6 liters of water. So like you have 1.6 kilos plus the weight of the kettle, you know, you have to be, you, and if you get lower, you have to get down lower than to get it, to get a lift and all that sort of stuff. So to be honest, everything we do is, is based on feedback and complete functionality. If it doesn't make sense, we don't do it. Whereas if, if we can make it to work somehow, you know, we go for it and see what people think. Yeah. That's great. You know, there's, there's no, the, the, our, our R&D department is very, very, very basic, very basic. We kind of kick it around a bit and say, that works, or that, nah, we no, we're not going to do that. Well, pa Patrick, can you, uh, just say, if nobody's ever tried this one, can you, can you show them how to actually grab it off the, the fire without putting your hand on top? And also Absolutely. how to pour it? Because that's, that's the whole concept of that, that, right? It is, it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What you want to, what you want to avoid is a knuckle singe. We've all had them. You, as he goes laughing, yeah. So we've all had the knuckle singe. So basically, because you get, as you spoke about earlier, you get that vortex. So that because the flames, the, the, the flames literally can be licking out the top of the chimney. They can be literally bouncing out, especially on a good windy day. They can be jumping out. So the last thing you want to do is, is it's still, it's amazing. I, I see so many videos and people, and they're, they're kind of making a mad grab at the kettle. You're thinking, Jesus, relax, man. Relax. It's not that complicated, you know. 
So what you want to do is, is you want to avoid this. So we don't take the handle up like that because that is that's piping hot on top. So we don't take it like that and lift because you've just got yourself a knuckle cinch. Okay, so what we want to do is, it's designed actually that you can hold it 95 degrees out like that. So we, we that's sitting on the fire base. Come along, one hand, two hands, like that. It'll sit perfectly perpendicular and we lift it up and away. And actually when we're refilling a kettle to reboil it, because we, we very often would use one kettle to boil for larger groups. So we'd refill it with water, put it back on the same fire. It's put back on the exact same way. It stays nice and perpendicular. So we lift like that, lift it off. Once it's clear of the fire then, then you can actually hold it up on top. You can carry that kettle then anywhere you want if you need to bring water further up the camp. And then we remove our whistle now. And for pouring, we just use the tilt. So it just hinges like that for, for pouring. But the main thing is to remember is that we do not grab it. I've seen people that they come at it and they grab the chain and then they grab the handle and they make a mad dash to lift it off the fire. There's no need. Nice and relaxed. Relax just once we get it as nice, just take it in both hands and lift it clean up and away. That fire, that wire handle is always cool. That stays cool to touch. So it's, you know. So that's the way two hands, 90 degrees, up and away. Once it's once it's clear of the fire, obviously you're you're good to go. That's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah, but just watch the knuckle cinch. You really, you really don't want the knuckle cinch. We've all, we've all had them. We kind of forget ourselves. And I, I, good. I, I just find this funny. I write a script every time I do this, and I never keep to, to any of it. <laughs> uh, I think I got everything: the pobo, the whistle, the uh, the um, it was change. The um, all right. Oh yeah, two more, two more questions. Uh, you have a competition on your website for photos. You still have that? Mm. We do. We love photos. Again. We're a small family business. We don't have a big sales and marketing department. So we depend on, on users, real users to send us pictures. So what we have is we have a competition time on our, on our websites. So it's on both the, the, we're based in obviously in Ireland here. So our, our, our site is kellykettle.com. And then we have one on the, on the, your side of the water, kellykettleusa.com. So we have the competition tab of both of them. And we want, we kind of use the hashtag, where do you use yours? So we want to see where people send us pictures and they can upload it quickly through the phone. Just take a picture and just send it via the phone or you can use the upload on a laptop or whatever, desktop. So we just want people to send as many pictures as possible of them using their kettles and where they use it. Because it's, it's a bit like, uh, actually it's a good time of the year, Easter time. Okay, so it's, you know the doubting Thomas where he had to put his hands into the wounds? We find the same with the kettle. If you walk into a store and you knew nothing about the kettle and you saw it on 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 a, on a shelf i don't think you'd ever buy it i think you'd go for the gas stove beside it because you understand the concept of gas we light it we put our thing on top it's same as the hob at home whereas the kettle until you actually use it and you light it you won't you, you're a complete doubt in thomas you actually won't believe it so we need people to actually say yeah yeah take your pictures this is how it works look where we use it i mean we used to use it obviously fishing a lot but we'd also use it we used to harvest peat turf years ago when we were kids so uh, and again that was a day long day that was fucking horrendous that was horrendous that you'd be taken away early in the morning driven miles away to you know to where the, the bog was and we would we would harvest peat and turn it and dry it and make it into piles and all that sort of stuff as it dried it bakes in the sun you 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 know how it works you have you seen it yeah yeah have you, you never tried it it's horrendous it's absolutely it's backbreaking work and that's why you have big families in ireland i reckon because you bring all the kids along to do this sort of nonsense. So you, you, you go and you save turf. So, but again, you were miles from nowhere. You're miles and miles and miles away from anywhere. And again, the, the kettle was brought out. That's, you know, so you're launching your picnic and your tea. Uh, everything was the kettle. So you bring the kettle out and we'd burn turf in it. We'd burn peat. So like we used it, you know, just day to day, we used it fishing, you know, burning peat and harvesting turf. And even on construction sites, stuff like that. So if you're away and building a house someplace and the power's not in there yet, you just there's loads of offcuts of timber and stuff. So we just fire it up and have a have a cup of tea. So that kind of thing, we want people to use them because I think I said before, one of our biggest, and particularly now at the moment, one of our biggest customers are preppers. And what we find is they buy the best of gear, but they put it in their basement and they don't use it again. We kind of say, no, take it out, take it out, use it. We use it, we use them recreationally all the time here uh, whereas we find in the us now a lot of customers will buy them and actually just stockpile it they'll put them away in the basement so we want people to say no no sure just where do you use yours show us pictures send us pictures and and, and we we'll give away we'll have a look we we'll give away a bit of gear every year every every month should i say 
nothing spectacular. You're not going to get rich, but uh, it's just a bit of fun. I can always tell if someone's used their Kelly kettle because uh, to me, we've used a lot. Like this, this is an old one. It smells like a, something like the steam era, like a steam engine. Yeah, I mean, it has a smell to it. I, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, I, I was in a small uh, farm community, and we had the steam era parade, and all the steam engines would go down the main street, and it smells like that, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. If it doesn't smell like that, and you haven't used it. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not using it right. You, look, if you don't smell like a campfire, you haven't camped. You know, it's part of the, you know, it's, it's just, it's not camping until you smell like a gypsy. Like you just, you have to smell that way. You know, you come home after a few days and you smell, you, you don't even get it off yourself until you come into the nice house. And then you think, oh yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of an odor there. But you yeah. need to smell smoky. If you don't smell smoky, you're, you know, you're not living. You got to make a perfume that smells like a campfire. So. <laughs> yeah, you should do. Yeah, just a little tip, sit upwind of the kettle. Sit upwind. You'll figure <laughs> it out after the first time you use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, last question, uh, Patrick. Um, so now uh, uh, you're still shipping them out, right? I mean, because wait, we're we're dealing with the uh, the the virus and, and everything's shutting down, whatever. But you're still mailing them out. We are. It's a change. Actually, in the last week or two, we found. <coughs> you mentioned COVID nineteen. I had a cough, psychosomatic probably. But the the uh, we've we noticed the in the last week things have shut down. There's, there's not many um, not many flights. International flights are, are not as common as they were so a lot of airlines have kind of grounded completely so we are at the moment traditionally we have shipped from ourselves here in Ireland we've shipped here and we ship all over the world so at the moment the flights internationally outside of the EU are restricted so we kind of ship now to uh, we kind of ship say, to Canada or to Australia or any place like that at the moment we're still shipping within Europe but actually our US colleagues are still shipping internationally and uh, are north of the border to Canada. And of course, you have a lot of um, distributors north of the border already in Canada. Yeah. So all those guys, thankfully, the likes of uh, couriers are deemed essential services. So yeah, we're, we're able to, we're still, we're still shipping as normal as we can. Yeah, I know I, I talked to Tim at Canadian Equipment. Um, he's, he's the one that was be closest to us. And uh, yeah, even though he shipped a lot out when all this happened, um, for various reasons, I guess everybody wanted uh, some type of stove that would work uh, without mm. fuel. But uh, yeah, but no, he, he's, he's, he, I mean, his store is shut down, but he, but he's still in the store shipping things out. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think online, you know, online, yeah. Most online stores are still able to function. Whereas obviously the high street stores for now are closed and, you know, hopefully they'll be opened up again soon enough. But I mean, it's, a, it's just a weird year. We don't know what's going to happen. It's uh, it's, it's a remarkable time to be alive actually. And uh while we're very fortunate here we're out in the countryside and we have space and it's actually nice to have the kids at home and everything and everybody's working at home and it's 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 it's, it's nice so far we probably end up killing each other within a couple of weeks so we have another three weeks of lockdown here we've done two we've three more to come um and the weather is good it's unseasonally nice here at the moment which is unusual it's usually wet and windy and then the kids will be under our, under our feet and we just you know we throttle them uh, so it's actually at the moment it's a nice it's a bit of a novelty for us um but i mean i'm i'm very thankful we're not in a you know we're not in a city block someplace and um you know looking at concrete walls and stuff we've been we've been pretty you know blessed to be in the west of ireland where we have space and uh it's a time like this i think you really appreciate it that's it yeah it, it is i, I I'm, I'm lucky I, I have a beautiful view of a lake right in front of me and uh, the birds are all coming back for the spring. So, um, yeah, so I hope we, we all get through it and uh, be safe, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm actually working my way towards not bad for a non whiskey drinker. Flow, <laughs> <laughs> Jim. All right. Well, thank you very much. It was actually great talking to you. We, we chat a lot um, back and forth, but not. We do, yeah. Digitally, digitally, not the same. No, it's not the same. No, emails yeah. and all that sort of stuff. No, it's not the same. So it's good. It's good to catch well, up. I, I, I have plans to go to Ireland soon because, uh, like I was saying, my, my father was uh, was Irish and my mum is Scottish. And I've been to Scotland four or five times, but never Ireland. So he is going to haunt me if I don't go soon. So Yeah. It, well, obviously, the invite is always there. Always there. And actually, I'll bring you. We'll, we'll, do, a day, we'll do a day on Loch Con. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a bit days fishing on Loch Con. You can try your hand at the fly fishing. I don't know. Do you fly fish? Yes. Do you? Yes. Okay. I know you catch a lot of brook trout, but it's always on an old bait or something. So we'll bring you, yeah, we'll do, we'll do a day or two on Lock And then we'll see, we'll get you paddling some places as well. So I'll bring, nice. you out, bring you out in Con where, where the kettle originated and we'll make tea and 
you can get the sticks and all that sort of stuff. Oh, then I'll be talking. See, I can't even. <laughs> not even Top of the morning to you. Top, Top of the morning, morning to you. <laughs> Actually, nobody ever says that. I've never, ever heard that except on a movie. Well, it's like Canadians. We don't say a boot. I've never said a boot before in my life. No. About. About. Not a boot. A boot. We do say a. a we do say a. A. Yeah. That's as in A, as in, how, how'd you say it? Uh, what do you do in A? Um, oh, A, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we don't say a boot. I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> a, boot, a boot is something you put on your foot. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Patrick, thanks a lot for the interview. And uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to stop it now. You ready? Oh. Super, thanks, Kevin. Got to sing an Irish song when you use that phone. I don't know any Irish songs. You don't know any Irish songs? What kind of fisherman are you? Actually, probably does. Yeah? Got a lot of Irish. Mm -hmm. Careful. Actually, you got an Irish song for him? That, that's clean? <laughs> <laughs> an Irish song? Oh, Johnny boy, the pipes are falling. That's all you got? Yeah. <laughs>